as children, it's normal for us when we see something that attracts our attention to run up to it, to want to grab it, touch it, play with it, inspect it, maybe throw it somewhere. But just do whatever you want to on that or based on that initial seeing of it. It attracts you and so you run up and grab it. And we learn as we grow from our parents and just from observation eventually that we're missing out on something. At least I think most of us do, whether we think about it this way consciously or not. We realize that you never really get to see something when you do that, when you just run to it immediately and just start doing things with it instead of looking at it. One example would be when you meet someone you like when you get older and you're fond of them, it's kind of cagey and you're observing them and you're watching them and they're watching you and you're getting to know each other without running into that, or at least hopefully you do, because we, we see all the destruction that's happening in our culture now because people just go straight to the, the touching and the handling and all that. And they don't, they don't observe, they don't watch, they don't get to know. And I think that's, that's something we can learn from as far as who our God is. Our God has a light touch like that. And you might say, well, come on, God has a light touch, the one who, who split the Red Sea and healed the sick and destroyed whole nations. That God has a light touch. Well, he's a God of many facets. He can be very dramatic and he can also have a light touch. You know, this still small voice that Elijah heard. And I think he wants to be sought after in such a way that we don't just run up to him and grab him and throttle him and identify him as this and that and the other. And, and I see, my wife and I see that as basically what religion does. Religion is the little child that runs up and grabs God and says, You are this! And, and tells everyone, This is who God is. This is what God is. This is what God thinks. And, and they haven't even gotten to know Him. They haven't even really observed Him. They haven't really spent time to look at Him and listen to Him and find out what God might think about certain things. Because what he thinks, I know this might sound silly to, you to hear, but what he thinks is important. And when you immediately stamp something on it, you know, like the little kid, this is mine, and I will do what I want with it. You know, it's the same thing with religion. This is, God is, and then slip your denomination's name in there. That's who God is. That's what he stands for. You're, you're being childish. You're, you're missing the real point of getting to know a person, because God is a person, and that's the whole job, as far as I can tell, religion is to diminish his person, is to take away his individuality, even those who claim they understand that God is an individual, still make him just a bunch of doctrines and traditions of men, and not a person, they completely depersonalize him, and of course the most common in Christianity makes him into three people, so that's the most horrific thing that's done to God in the so-called Christian world, it depersonalizes him. It diminishes him. It demeans and degrades him. It really does. It's, it's awful what religion does to God. It is the little child throwing uh, the gra the, your granny's you know, nice little toys or, or decorations or knickknacks around. That's, and, and again, it's understandable. We all need to go through that. My wife and I went through it. We're not condemning anyone for doing that. We're just encouraging you not to do that, to, to respond to his light touch. It is a call, and it is powerful, and he does want people to come to him that know who he is. But he stood here, folks, he stood here right here, and he had all kinds of opportunities to say in black and, black and white language, this is who I am. Instead, he chose to say it in a... In a almost subtle way, in that light touch way. He that has seen me has seen the Father. It allows for religion to step in and say, no, he doesn't really mean that. And then a bunch of religious people believe it because they want their religion. They want to grab it and have it. and, and they, Because it takes a certain amount of boldness, a certain amount of courage to say, yeah, that is God telling me he's God. He really is telling me that. And he's allowing me to have the choice to still reject that. Because... Whether it's the atheist, more so the atheist, or the religious person, people basically want to be forced. They want to be forced to believe. They, they don't want to have a real choice. Because I see this all the time in discussions and arguments between atheists 
and believers. And they're both calling each other idiots because the, the atheist says, well, you're so stupid because God doesn't even show himself to you. And then the religious person says, well, obviously he does. It's undeniable. You are a fool. Well, you're not a fool for denying the way they claim it is, but you're a fool for not seeking it. You're a fool for deciding in your heart there is no God. But on the other side of that coin, I think it is just as foolish to slam a denomination, a religion, a theology, a doctrine, whatever tradition of man you can find near you, grab it and smack it on his face and, and call that God instead of seeking his face. Seeking his face is not something that happens once and then you're done and you go on about your life for the rest of your life. Now I've seen God. Now I know God. Now I understand who... It's something that goes on continuously, forever, and will continue, I believe, after this life. Can you completely know God? Obviously, we will see Him in a greater way, at least I think it's obvious, in a more clearly defined way. Now we see through a glass darkly, then we shall see Him much more clearly, but we are still going to be getting to know someone. So that is something you should pursue, and we encourage it, because... That's where your fulfillment comes in. That's where you find out who you really are. The more you find out who He is, the more you find out who you really are. Because the only thing that's really important about you is who you are to Him. And as you gain understanding of who He is, you will see who you are to Him. And the two of you will grow closer to each other through that, through that seeking, through that very purposeful search of your God. As a person, as a person, not as a system, not as a doctrine or a theology or a religion or a denomination, you want to seek Him. Don't just run up and grab Him and say, I got God. Look at Him. Take your time. Respond to that soft touch He has. Really, seriously. I don't mean like study Him like, like a molecule under a microscope. I mean like a person. Develop a, a, an ear for him, develop a heart for his voice that you would hear him because he can be seen. He can be seen. Obviously, a lot of people did not see the Father when they saw Jesus, which I take it to mean they just didn't see Jesus. They didn't see who he really is. But I see him for who he is because I see my Father in him. That's who Jesus is. And if you don't see it yet, it's okay. Don't go on my word, go according to your search and according to what the Spirit reveals to you, because He said He will be found if you search for Him with all your heart, and then life begins, because He'll never leave you, and He'll never forsake you. Who? Jesus, your Father who is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.